In this live stream, we'll learn how to lint a git commit message using commit lint and husky. So what is commit lint, commit lint and husky? Commit lint is a configuration that is used to help you to lint commit messages. And then husky is a way to set up git hooks so that it can run commit lint in a pre-commit hook, for example. And so let's go straight to our terminal. I have currently an empty directory. And so in this empty directory, first things first, we'll need to initialize an empty Git repository if you don't have one already. And then we can first actually create a package JSON. Since this is a test or demo package, let's just echo an empty object to package JSON just so it's empty. And then first of all, let's first install commit lint. So I'll be using npm here, but feel free to use yarn instead. So we'll do npm install, and we want to install first the commit lint CLI, and then I will also install config conventional. So what this command does, it's a shorthand for installing at commit lint slash CLI and at commit lint slash config dash conventional. So now it's installing. And so CLI is used to run the command line interface. And then the config conventional is kind of the default config that you can use, which has a few types and scopes that it uses to extend of. Cool, it's almost done installing and it's done. Excellent. So now we can see in our package JSON, we have these dev dependencies installed. So first things first, let's just check out what commit lint does. We can simply run npx on commit lint binary and you'll see that it will have all these commands. And so the easiest way to kind of test commit lint is simply echo test commit message like that, and then you want to pipe it to the commit lint binary. And you'll see that, boom, it will throw an error and it'll tell you the problems. And so let us first, it says, please add rules to your commit lint.config.js. So let's do that. So first things first, what we can do is for the commit lint.config.js, that's one way, one file name that it looks for. You can alternatively create a commit lint RC or commit lint RC dot JS or commit lint, commit lint RC dot JSON. So let's actually create a dot commit lint RC dot JSON. And then here, all we want to do is we want to extends what we just installed, which is at commit lint slash config conventional, just like that. And then so if we try to run the command again, now instead of saying, please add rules, it'll say subject may not be empty, type may not be empty. And so to make it pass, all we have to do is use one of the following the convention, like we can use feet or feature, there's fix, there's chore, there's refactor, there's many others. You can check it out on the commit lint site, which is in that blog post I have. You can find that in the description below. And then now when you write this message, no errors. Perfect. So now we have commit lint set up. The next thing we want to do is set up Husky. So to install Husky, all we have to do is npm install Husky. And we'll save it to dev dependencies. Cool. And just so you can see, the current versions of Husky that we're using is Husky version 5. But if you need to support Husky version 4, you can check out the blog post, which has documentation and details on how to set up 4. So once we have that set up, now we go to our package JSON. And the first thing we, we need to do is, let's assume that currently our package, our NPM package is private. So we will need to add a script and in this npm run script, we want to add the post install script. So this is a given npm script lifecycle that happens when you do npm install the package. And to 
in, to install Husky, we need to call Husky install. And so to do that manually, you just do npx Husky to call the binary install. And you'll see that boom, Husky git hooks installed. And if you do an ls, you'll see that everything looks good. And then once that's installed, to add the git message hook, which is the git hook, you need to run npx husky add, and then do husky slash commit message. And then here, what we can do is we can add the commit lint hook. And so you might be tempted to say, hey, let me just do commit lint like that, edit dollar sign, so dollar sign passes the argument into it, which is the message. But you need to call the binary directly. In order to do that, you need to put mpx or yarn in front of that. And you'll see now created.husky commit message. So if you do an ls again, or actually ls-a, you'll see that there is a .husky folder. So let's just take a look. And that's how it looks like. Let me open it up just so you can see how it looks. So it has a git ignore. It ignores the underscore, and the underscore is simply just the default Husky initialization script, just a bash script. But the key thing is now we have the git commit message Husky hook, which is set up over here. And you can see that this is the command that we added. Perfect. And so now all we have to do is we can test that our git commit hook works. And to test it is very simple. We have everything in here already. So let's just add these guys. And then we normally we don't add the no modules. We'll have a git ignore in here. But for now, just to ensure that the demo goes on, I'm not going to create a git ignore where I uh, ignore no modules directory. So let's do a git commit for message. And so let's do this should fail. And you'll see, boom, input, this should fail. It says subject may not be empty, type may not be empty. Perfect. And then let's do feature like that. This should pass. And nice. And it passed the lint, and so the git commit succeeded. And so this is when you are dealing with a private NPM package. With Husky, though, if you need to support public packages, for example, if private was false or the private field was not present, then you will also need to add pinst. And so what pinst is, is a package that allows you to skip the post install script so that when people are doing npm install your package or you're just installing the package yourself, it doesn't run all the time or even during publish. So we can do npm install pinst like that. Save it in dev dependencies. And then once it's done, now to support the public package, you need to add a pre-publish only script, which is once again another NPM lifecycle script, and then call pinst disable, and then a post-publish script another npm lifecycle script where you do pinst enable. So this ensures that when you publish your npm package, because it's public now, that it disables the post install and then re-enables it after it's done with the publish. And so this is to support pr public packages. But if your package is private, meaning it's not on the npm registry, then you are good without these additional steps. And that's as simple as setting up commit lint for your package. That's it for this stream. I will catch you in the next one.